I will now use the rest of my speech to read a statement from the Brighton and Hove Black Lives Matter group. The Black Lives Matter movement began on July 13th, 2013, following the acquittal of Trayvon Martin's murderer. We have seen many surges in the movement over the years, but following the murder of George Floyd on May 25th, 2020, and witnessing protests across the world, the Brighton BLM group formed. The group has, and continues to, organise physical protests, but their activism spans much further than this. Part of the strategy is to hold our council accountable and apply pressure where possible, as we all know words and statements are nothing without action. The global movement strives for the eradication of white supremacy while empowering black communities. Empowerment takes the form of fostering black innovation, creating safe spaces for black expression and ensuring we centre all black lives at all times. This includes, but is not limited to, our trans and gender non-conforming siblings, the LGBTQIA plus community, disabled folks, those with mental health issues and people who are seeking asylum. For over 500 years, the societies we live in have been constructed to make life harder if you're black. We all know this and surely we don't need to offer a history lesson, but then again, maybe we should, as black history and colonialism isn't taught in our schools. Despite Black History Month being made to display black history and excellence in 1926, there is so much anecdotal and numerical evidence to support the opposite, a failure in educating children. Currently, under the Key Stage 3 curriculum, there is no statutory place for black history, only emphasising this failure to educate and glorify the black community who have done so much for the socio-economic growth of this country. The council is clearly aware of the systemic racism right in our country, and as announced last month, they would like to claim an anti-racist stance. This is well and good, but you can't just talk the talk, you have to walk the walk. You cannot claim an anti-racist stance while black people are more than 10 times more likely to be stopped and searched in our city. Additionally, you cannot claim stop and search practices frequently target young black men as a result of cuckooing in county lines while not pouring funding into projects such as the Black and Minority Ethnic Young People's Project, particularly when young black people in our community are saying this is an essential service. You cannot claim an anti-racist stance whilst colonial history is not taught in our schools and beyond. Equality and diversity training is often inadequate and the council should take an anti-racist education seriously if it wished to claim such a position. You cannot claim an anti-racist start stance whilst the tallest attraction in our city is sponsored by a corporation who profits £30 million per year from racist deportation contracts with the Home Office. Our council cannot claim an anti-racist stance while there are still gollywogs being sold in shops, whilst we are still proportionately followed around supermarkets, whilst we are still treated unfairly in venues and nightclubs, whilst we are disproportionately reprimanded by our employers, including the Sussex NHS Partnership and Brighton and Home City Council, and whilst you do not include a plethora of black voices and lived experiences when decision making. We appreciate the support of some councillors, but want to emphasise that we are not looking for a seat at the table. We want to dismantle the table and bring equity of opportunity to all. Our demands for the council thus far represent a step towards this. And that's the end of the Black Lives Matter statement, so I urge you all to please support this motion. Thank you.